I have played way, 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 way too much Hitman in my time. So I figured I'd use all of that knowledge to make the official Hitman tier list. So what makes me qualified to make the official Hitman tier list versus everyone else? <laughs> Glad you asked. Let me show you. Okay, uh, let's let's get started. I'm just going to judge the maps based on how well they play and just generally how much I enjoy them. I'm not really trying to be scientific about this. Also, I'm not going to do this in order because it's my tier list and you can't make me. But I'll put chapters in the video if you want to jump around. With that said, let's start with the last mission in the last game, Carpathian Mountains, or Romania. Honestly, uh, I don't like it. Like, at all. It's just a long train with practically no variety in how you can get through guards. There's very few interesting disguises, very little to explore and discover, and it feels incredibly jarring compared to the freedom that's usually granted in Hitman. When I first played it, all I knew is that it was on the mountainside and I was excited for a more naturally themed map. I don't know, maybe some tunnels to explore. I was especially excited since it was the finale of Hitman 3, and as a finale, it was a letdown. I just generally really didn't have a great time with it, and as a result, this map goes firmly in the D tier to me. I don't think this game has any truly F tier maps, even this one has some redeeming qualities. I think it looks nice, I think it has an interesting mission idea, and it's pretty cool to learn how to silent assassin. Uh, that being said, I just don't think this map works super well. So how about a palette cleanser with the Isle of Segale? I think this is the map I've probably played the most due to the challenges I've done on this channel, and it took some time, but it grew on me. I'm not personally the biggest fan of the dark lighting, but that doesn't do too much to take away from how interesting this map is. There's lots to do and discover, and with plenty of unique and fun story missions for the player to follow. I also think it does a pretty good job of balancing difficulty with accessibility. There's tons of ways to get around the map, with lots of ledges to climb around on, but there's also tons of guards roaming every last hallway to make up for it. While I think there might be a bit too many guards, and I could definitely see this map being pretty challenging for a new player, it goes firmly into the A tier for me. Bangkok is not my favorite. I think this map is seriously flawed in a lot of ways. The main one being the player's ability to travel around the map. Uh, they pretty much don't have the ability to travel around the map. Most major areas have two, maybe three entrances, all of which are usually heavily guarded. There's very little variety in story missions, and I think most of them are pretty simple. I guess other than the one that gets a target to kill another target, that's kind of cool. I really like the idea of a hotel for a map, but the hotel rooms are practically non-existent in terms of gameplay. Just about all of them are either entirely empty with nothing in them or have one random item. I call areas like these dead space. Areas that the player can enter that provide practically nothing. They aren't used to get around, they don't have valuable items, and they don't provide unique NPCs or disguises. Generally, I find dead space to really kill the atmosphere and enjoyability of a level. It feels discouraging to find a new area only to realize it's entirely pointless. For that reason, along with it being really frustrating just to get from point A to point B, I'm putting Bangkok firmly in the D tier. Next up is Dubai. I really like this map. It was a pretty good first mission for Hitman 3. Elevator shafts and stairwells can be found all across the map, allowing the player to very easily get pretty much wherever they want to go with a little trouble once you learn the basics. I think the story missions aren't too interesting, but being able to cut the target's parachute and then see them leap to their death is definitely pretty cool. Along with that, there's some interesting disguises and places to discover, but I can't say any of them were super intriguing to me personally. I don't want to be too critical, especially since this was the introductory map for Hitman 3. So overall, I think Dubai is pretty simple, but always pretty fun to play. There's little to no dead space. I like the aesthetic. I'm going to put it in high B tier. Whittleton Creek. Oh, I love Whittleton Creek. Objectively, I can see why some people might not like the map. The houses all have the same interior, some that look accessible aren't, and it takes a while to get from one place to another since the map is entirely flat, but I really like it. I love the aesthetic of running around in a suburban neighborhood as a killing machine. I feel like, despite having the same interior, most of the houses still feel unique. There's one full of guards, another's hosting a big barbecue. You can dress up as a real estate agent to start selling an empty house. This map easily has some of my favorite characters and disguises in the entire game. The politician and real estate agent are definite standouts, but the mailman, fumigator, and garbage man are also fun to me. If it weren't for the extremely frustrating clue objective the game forces you to complete, this map would be S tier for me. But because those clues seriously hamper the gameplay by restricting creativity down to just uh, go find three items somewhere, this map is going in low A tier for me. 
Hokkaido, an absolute classic. In my opinion, it's probably one of the best maps from Hitman 2016. It has the unique mechanic where disguises can be used to unlock doors rather than keys, but these locks can still be hacked with the right tools. Due to this disguise mechanic, it has a range of interesting disguises the player can find along with some pretty interesting story kills. Locking Yuki Yamazaki and Asana is a classic insane hitman kill, and that's not all this map has to offer. Getting from place to place can be troublesome, but it's not nearly the ridiculous difficulty that can be found in other maps like Bangkok. I think it still suffers the same issue that plagues all of the original hitman maps, in that some targets can be really limiting in how the player can approach their assassination, whether it be due to a target that barely moves, or the map simply having very few methods of traversal. It's especially limiting in the fact that you have to reach Mastery 20, to be able to bring items with you, which I think is just way too much grinding for that. But despite that, I really like the aesthetic of Hokkaido, and I think it's a pretty fun map as a whole. I put it in the high B tier. Mendoza, Mendoza. I don't really have much to say about this one. I think the targets and story missions are pretty cool. I think it looks very nice. It has this guy who spends his entire life peeing. B tier. Mumbai. Mumbai is an interesting one because one time I read someone say that the more you play Mumbai, the more you will like it, and at the time, I did not like Mumbai very much, and I thought the internet person was a fool. Then I played it more for videos, and it turns out the internet person was right. Mumbai is pretty fun. I think the reason new players don't like it as much is because without lots of game knowledge, it takes super long to get from point A to point B, but unlike other maps, I feel the shortcuts on this map are less intuitive, like this ladder the player can shoot down to quickly change elevations. This makes it a fantastic jungle gym for experienced players to enjoy while providing a notable challenge to newer players. But even using the best shortcuts, it can still take a while to get from place to place, and at times it can feel frustrating to navigate. I put Mumbai in the high B tier. Paris. Classic Paris. Everyone loves this map. I mean, what's not to love? Restrictive access to targets, multiple rooms of dead space, uninteresting story kills. I just don't get the hype around Paris, man. I really don't. I know it's the first map in the first game and everything, so I'm sure people like it for that. But in terms of gameplay to me, it honestly just feels bad to play. Some guards are in the strangest spot that just makes things harder for the player, and if you want to get to Dahlia, you either get an invitation, take a disguise, or very slowly climb up a pipe. Along with that, there is so much dead space on this map that's just useless to the player. It's definitely not as bad as some other maps, but for me, Paris is as C-tier as it gets. If you can explain the appeal to Paris to me, I would love to hear it, because I just don't really enjoy playing it. Dartmoor. Now this is a map. To me, Dartmoor feels like they took everything they learned designing Paris and perfected it. The story missions are super interesting, every last nook and cranny has something for the player to find, you'll be discovering new things about this map years after you first play it. There are always dozens of ways for the player to get where they want to go. Some people might think that's a bad thing, but my personal favorite part of Hitman is having the freedom to take on missions in whatever dumb way I want, so when a map like Dartmoor gives you that room to breathe and experiment, that is what makes it S tier. Okay, okay, let's slow down a bit. Santa Fortuna. I say let's slow down a bit because you will certainly feel slow playing this map. It is absolutely huge with very little way to get between areas faster. This map is basically three different maps duct taped together with very little overlap. You can be a wanted fugitive in one part of the map after killing 17 people, and at most one third of the map will even know you're a criminal. While this can lead to interesting gameplay, I think it ends up feeling more frustrating to have everything so far apart. It has some pretty funny story missions, but in the end, I think this map is a high C tier at best. Marrakesh. This map made me debate whether or not there should be an F tier. It is without a doubt my least favorite Hitman map of all time, including the train. Both targets are super hard to get to, it's ridiculously difficult to get between the two of them, there are guards everywhere, the story missions are uninteresting other than the toilet one being a little funny. Overall, this map has very little replayability to me, and it's not that fun even on the first playthrough. It also has ample amounts of dead space, and the passage underneath the map has disappointingly little utility. You can get one target to evacuate and run to the other target, that is, if it actually works, because at least half the time I tried, he just bugged out and stood in a corner. Low, low D tier for Marrakesh. I just don't like it. 
Chong King, Chong Sing, I have no idea what the correct pronunciation is, and no matter what I say, someone tells me I'm wrong, so I'm calling it China. China is a pretty fun map. Its targets are completely across the map from each other, including elevation, which makes getting between them fairly difficult. However, unlike Marrakesh, there are a variety of different strategies and pathways that can be used to get between the target. You can also get the targets to leave their areas, which works a little more than 50% of the time. On top of that, I think it has some pretty interesting story missions. Dressing up as a homeless man is a good time. I'm also a sucker for the Neon City aesthetic. It has a little bit of dead space here and there, but overall a pretty fun map. I put it in low A tier. Haven Island. Everyone hates Haven Island, and I see why. The guard sight lines are doubled, but the real problem is that they also seem to have x-ray vision, and it's not uncommon to get spotted through a wall or object. It can also be difficult to get between targets in a timely manner, but that's just due to them being spread apart. There isn't really any threat of alerting guards when running between areas, and as much as a sucker as I am for the island aesthetic, this map really just doesn't feel that fun to play. The story missions are pretty boring. Despite two of the targets being out in the open, the insane amounts of x-ray vision guards makes it too frustrating to experiment with different kills. Uh, it's definitely the worst map out of the Hitman 2 pool for me. I'm putting Haven Island in the low C tier. Now let's compare Haven Island to its other DLC counterpart. Oh yeah, you had to pay extra for Haven Island. But its counterpart, New York, might just make it worth it. New York is absolutely fantastic. Despite its smaller layout, it is packed with interesting storylines and details to find. Not an ounce of dead space can be found on this map. It has been trimmed down to exactly what you need. There are two objectives. You have to kill a target and rob a bank vault. The bank vault can be a bit limiting since it's a stationary objective that you can't access from outside, and the target of this map can be a bit difficult since she's on the top level of the bank, but overall this map is just fun. It's not too difficult to get from area to area, there's a variety of approaches. I don't really know what to say, I just like it a lot. High A tier for New York. I'm lumping together the ICA facilities since they're both tutorials, and I feel very similarly towards both of them. These are the freeform training and the final test. I think they're both great for their purpose. They're both small, simple missions that are designed to give the player an introduction to the game. I think both of them have enough variety in how one can approach them to make them interesting. Obviously, they lack variety compared to a regular mission, but even if these were regular missions, they would still be an interesting change of pace. I honestly wish these maps were in Freelancer just to spice it up a bit, though I'm not sure how they would explain that in the lore. I wouldn't go out of my way to replay these maps, but they're okay. C tier. Next up we have Berlin. Berlin is everything I would ever want from a Hitman mission and more. This map embodies the freedom of approach these games were built on. Instead of the usual one or two targets, there are 10 targets to eliminate, and the player has to kill any five they choose to finish the mission. I think this was an amazing design choice, since if one target feels frustrating, just kill someone else. Want an extra challenge? Try knocking out all 10 targets so you can kill all of them. This theme of freedom continues with the map design. Every single part of the map has something interesting to find, and there are numerous routes the player can take to get from place to place. It's not always easy, but your game knowledge will be greatly rewarded in Berlin, as you find different subtle ways to get places easier. The only critique I have for this map is that the forest area doesn't have much going on. I think an item or two could be cool to put out there, even if it's just a poisonous frog or something, but considering there's already a sniper tower out there, that's just a nitpick. Easy S tier for Berlin, putting it above Dartmoor for me. Now from S tier, we come down to Sapienza, where we will be moving down just a little bit to the A tier. Sapienza is fantastic, easily my favorite map from Hitman 2016. Usually maps with non-target related objectives are a bit annoying to me, but I think they got it right with the virus. There are multiple approaches the player can take to finish this objective. Most notably, they can just do it from far away by shooting it. I really don't like when the game forces the player to enter one specific room and complete a task to finish the mission. I think it bogs down the pacing and limits creativity. Creativity. The other two targets are pretty well made too. They aren't anything too interesting in my opinion, and I'm not really a fan of how any of the story missions are for them, but they get the job done. Sapienza is easily high A tier for me. Hawks Bay. Eh. Hawks Bay is alright, I guess. It's an introductory mission, but it's just kind of boring. Like, half the map is just an empty field with practically nothing going on. Uh, there's not that much variety in how you can kill your target. Low C tier for Hawks Bay. 
Miami. Oh, I love Miami. I'm an absolute sucker for the bright raceway aesthetic. It just feels so fun to explore. There are tons of interesting things for the players to find, tons of places to go. The targets are interesting and the story kills are fun. I think this map does an excellent job of allowing the player to get from one area to another without struggling too much, but it's definitely less intuitive than other maps. It can take a bit to get from one area to another. It also has a bit of dead space on it, but it's limited to the outskirts of the map and it rarely takes away from the gameplay. While the targets are interesting, I do think they can be a little bit frustrating at times. The only way to get Sierra off the track early I know of is to steal an outfit and end the race or just shoot another driver. And Robert can be a little tough to get to in his lab, but I think it's a healthy difficulty. I don't want every level to just be a cakewalk. High A tier for Miami. But speaking of not a cakewalk, let's finish off this tier list with arguably the most difficult mission in all of the Hitman games. Colorado. Everyone and their grandmother hates Colorado. They say it's too restricted, there's too many guards, there's not enough to do, and that it's just a bad map. What do I think? Well, kind of makes for interesting content, so I kind of like it. But if I didn't make videos, this map would suck to play. There's little variety in approach. Some targets feel like they shouldn't even be a target. I like the idea of Colorado, but with the uninteresting story kills and an overly restrictive map, it goes in the low C tier for me. With that, the tier list is complete. Hopefully I didn't forget any maps. That would be embarrassing. Embarrassing. If I did, they probably weren't important anyways. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Just remember this is the official tier list, so if you disagree, your opinion is wrong, you're gonna have to change that. Subscribe. I'll see you next time.